Why are we encouraging women to take on more and more masculinity in a world which is hungry for the healing presence of the deep, feminine? The healthy and mature woman is a blend between femininity and masculinity, but we have got the proportionalities skewed. Over the last few years of working with women in therapeutic space on issues of trauma and the beauties of their dreams, I have learned that women, generally speaking, are far too situated in their masculine consciousness, and to some degree, from the Jungian perspective, the work of Carl Jung, they are in an animus possession. So in today's video, we're going to be exploring the ways that women can tap into their inner masculine side without being taken over by the masculine shadow. I want women to feel like women, not second-rate men, because I see the story behind closed doors month after month of very successful, very beautiful, very ambitious, very creative women who reach a certain point in their 30s and their 40s where they realize that they were sold a lie and they did not get the outcomes that they were promised because their masculine side became their dominant side. So let's explore it in today's video. We'll start with a wonderful extract which frames the conversation around the animus in particular from The Invisible Partners by John Sanford, a Jungian thinker. I recommended this in my complimentary video to this question. There's a two-part series right now. I did an anima-specific video targeted towards men. This is my response towards integrating the inner masculine targeted towards women. Bit of a tongue twister to play with these concepts, filming them back to back. But today we're going to launch in with this uh, extract from animus psychology. What is the animus? And what does it mean in terms of us projecting the inner male towards men in our lives as a woman? If a woman projects, for quote from the book, if a woman projects onto a man her positive animus, the image of the savior, the hero, and the spiritual guide, she overvalues that man. This is a key idea that we're going to be exploring in the video. If you project your animus, you are overvaluing, falling in love with, or idealizing the inner masculine that you've yet to start to draw back into your own power. Quote continues, she is fascinated by him, drawn to him, sees him as the ultimate man and the ideal lover. She feels completed only through him as though it were through him that she found her soul. Many women have had this experience of falling madly in love with their boyfriend or their husband and realizing only a few years later that there's a particular feeling of hollowness, a particular feeling of emptiness, which isn't the spacious emptiness of the womb which is about to give birth and full of potential. It's a feeling of having been left in the desert. There is a distinction to be made between barren emptiness and fertile emptiness, potential, spaciousness. Key distinction to make, but the woman who is caught in animus projection, again, the inner masculine, over-exaggerated and painted over the men in her life, she's going to have that feeling of being incomplete, quote continues. Such projections are especially likely to be made onto men who have the power of the word. A man who uses words well, who has power with ideas and is effective in getting those across, is an ideal figure to carry such animus projections from a woman. When this happens, he then becomes bigger than life to her, and she is quite content to be the loving moth fluttering around his flame. Final sentence. In this way, she misses the creative flame within herself, having displaced it onto the man. This book is excellent for both men and women to read. It really goes into anima and animus psychology, both halves of the same coin, in quite an accessible but also quite practical way. For the sake of this video, I do not want you to be caught in animus projections, either positive or negative animus projections. John Sanford there is talking mainly about the positive anima, the saviour, the hero, the scholar, the wise teacher, the ideal lover, the perfect husband. Of course, we have the negative animus, which is the tyrant, the abuser, the manipulator, the, the bad boy in general. It's that archetype also being projected outwards. What does it mean for a woman to own her animus, to be in contact with the masculine energy, 
but not overtaken by it, either overtaken in the form of falling madly in love with men and losing her identity, or becoming so animus possessed that she becomes the badass career woman who realizes only five years too late that she hasn't had a period in many, many years, and she's actually worked herself into infertility because she's so thoroughly dissociated from her feminine experience. This is an unfortunate reality for very ambitious women who went too lopsided into masculine striving. Of course, men also suffer from this. Something that is worth mentioning is that although women should have the opportunity to develop careers at the level, pace, and intensity that they would desire, imitating the masculine way of doing that, which often leads to heart attacks and cancers in their 40s and their 50s, is not the indication towards the greatest possibility for any woman or any man. A man who truly has consciousness has an ability to work with meaning and purpose and consistency and really strive towards the hierarchical climb in the career ladder without setting himself up for a heart attack. And women, if they start to notice that their body is rebelling, if they're getting very heavy periods, if they're missing their periods, if they're starting to have irritability, mood swings, and all kinds of challenges in their romantic relationships, and they have the consciousness to realize that, oh, I may be way too locked into masculine consciousness 40, 50, 60 hours per week, and I've lost my ability to connect with the soul of womanhood, that's when they realize that they have become the animus projection. They have become possessed by their inner masculine. So how can we help women to prevent this pattern? How, how have I worked with women, uh, I suppose, so far in terms of actual trajectories of working with someone over four months, a woman who comes to me in her 30s or her 40s usually, and is interested in having clearly some kind of contact with a healthy masculine figure, which is what I seem to represent. I'd need to be safe enough and competent enough and smart enough and sensitive enough, all of these bunny ears to encourage a, a successful woman to want to open up to me. Usually speaking, it requires education. Psychoeducation is the number one way for a woman to withdraw her animus projections and mitigate the risk of being possessed by the masculine energy which she should be in contact with, but not taken over by. I've got a few book recommendations. We've got three, um, actually. We've got The Shadow King by Sidra Stone. This is a classic that I recommend to nearly every female client, and often many of my male clients, is talking about the pattern of the internalized masculine in both positive and negative form. This is the man within who says, hey, maybe you shouldn't wear that out tonight because it's a little bit too revealing, and I know that you want to express yourself, but the area isn't the best. And that healthy fatherly voice of, that's not repression, that's not suppression, that's not being controlling, that's just a healthy assessment which mitigates against the fluidity of the feminine, but also on the worst side, that can be the same masculine voice when turned toxic, the shadow king in this case, who criticizes a woman for being too fat or too thin, who is incredibly self-critical in the mirror and basically becomes a tyrannical figure, very much like the cover of this book, looming over the inner light of the unwounded feminine. And, I mean, if you look at that book again, course the expressions are a bit distinct but from one hand to another the masculine both looms over and controls the woman but also keeps her safe maybe that light wouldn't be able to be just as bright if she was worried about other men and women seeing how powerful she was and stealing that light from her heart of course it's a bit of a mythological story i'm not going into it in full detail but it's important for us to recognize as men and women just how complementary we are and how we do really need each other as we're growing towards wholeness. Second book that I'm going to recommend, it's The Ravaged Bridegroom, Masculinity in Women by Marianne Woodman, which is the first time I've noticed. Uh, Marianne Woodman often writes very wonderful books about conscious femininity, and even within her last name, Wood Man, Earth Man, Earthy Man Connection, and isn't it particular that that's the front cover that she chose right there, the man beneath the earth pulling Persephone down, the uh, classic uh, mythological figure into the underworld, maybe that's Hades, we don't know. A book like The Ravaged Bridegroom is going to show you how masculinity, similarly to The Shadow King, this is a bit more of an advanced book, how masculinity, uh, unconscious masculinity, will start to take over your life 
and lead to certain undesirable outcomes, namely very disappointing romantic relationships and lots of codependency, lots of, co lots of enmeshment, but also that feeling of dysregulated moods. If you don't have a healthy animus, let me put it this way, if you don't have a healthy inner masculine, if you're not truly capable of bringing out the best of, mas best of masculinity, you might struggle with maintaining a structure and maintaining a direction, even if that direction and that structure is in service of a feminine goal. This is the mother who struggles to keep the timetable for the sake of her children because she's a bit too situated in her feminine. She hasn't got the forwards planning to make the lunches the night before so that the children can have an easier flow in the morning and she's not stressed out trying to get everything done before the kids head off out the door. She can be more present as a mother because she did the hard work behind the scenes the night before so that when seven o'clock comes, she can walk into the child's room. Hey darling, how are you? It's time to get up. Leave them in bed for ten minutes. Come back a bit later. It's time to get up now. Rather than completely stressed because she wakes up at 7.15, then needs to make the sandwiches and it's 7.30 and it's, we're late for school and, you know, dysregulating her own children. Whatever it might be. Bit of a caricature example, but that principle there of masculine structuring within the woman to provide more support for her own feminine agenda or her feminine expression can also find form in terms of creative pursuits. A woman who is, let's say, a, um, a professional dancer or professional painter, she will need to find a way to structure her work routine in a very masculine, systematized way. Very often, this is the practice hour, this is the rehearsal hour, this is the meeting with the mentor, this is the output on social media to grow the brand. She will really need to have a very strongly developed masculine side to complement her natural feminine flowing expression. We need both. This is where integration really comes into play. You can psychoeducate yourself, but the final book that I'm going to recommend is really going all the way into the territory. Because every man needs to learn what it's like to be a woman, and every woman needs to learn what it's like to be a man. A bit of a cheesy intro to the book right there. I'm glad that I pulled it off. But a book like this, an essay collection of around 50 to 60 essays on manhood and masculinity. Also, the videos that I put up on this channel targeted male energy, masculine psychology, taking the time to really understand what makes men men, not only so that you can love them better and you can support them better, but also, of course, so you can protect yourself against the lower consciousness aspects of the masculine psyche and not be fixated on either or, not think that all men are good, all men are bad. Any of this simplistic thinking between the sensitive man and the barbarian man and not seeing the places in between in the same way that women also go through their own levels of consciousness when I'm working with female clients and we both look back at the adolescent gossiping and cattiness and there they are as an adult woman going, wow, can't believe how cruel I was. At the time, they wouldn't think that they were cruel. They thought that they were just being like everyone else, but with maturity, they realized just how mean they were as a woman. They weren't actually the kind, sensitive, empathic one, even though that's the story that they were telling themselves. They were also uh, quite manipulative and quite sociopathic in certain ways. That's often a very masculine shadow, um, uh, the feminine shadow that's um, coming out as like a passive aggressive masculine attacking energy. Men, of course, do the inverse generally, which is they often take a very long time to admit that they are struggling with their emotions and to be honest about the places which are wounded. So many areas that we could go into for a video on women getting in touch with their masculine and integrating more of that from the outside world so that they feel like they're less tethered, I suppose is the way to put it, less tethered to a constant masculine presence, to be able to have a husband, a partner, male friends, male colleagues, male teachers, father figure, brother figures, all of the different men that a woman will have in her life, to be able to receive their support, be inspired by their example, work with them in creative space and play with them in delightful moments in whatever form is appropriate, romantically and non-romantically, and not get too swept up in the projections of, if only I had this type of man, then I could have this type of experience, realize that they can structure themselves, but also have the sensitivity to realize that when they've been doing the career a bit too hard for a, too many, a few too many years in a row, and their period is yet again six days late 
and they're actually starting to gain weight because they haven't been eating in a way which is nourishing for them. They were eating too much sugar, they were eating out too much, they weren't actually doing the home-cooked meals that really nourish their heart. Small moments like that, just to give an example, a cliche example of work being way too much and then the body getting dissociative, any of those patterns can start to arise at any moment in our life and the healthy inner work pathway for a woman who's really trying to maintain and develop a higher level of consciousness where she's fundamentally a feminine creature, fundamentally a feminine soul, but knows how to complement her own identity with certain seasonal elements of masculinity and then feels the mental health benefits of doing that process. That's a wonderful place to be. Again, I recommend that you check out my previous video or the complimentary video to this one on anima psychology, which is where I'm speaking to men about their inner feminine, the psychoeducation across the boundary with men crossing over, women crossing over, and learning what it means to be different yet complementary is really the key part of withdrawing projections because we realize just how much we do have and then a humble admittance that we don't have everything ourselves. We will never truly be whole. There's a reason that the majority of men and women as one of their primary life goals is to have a family and maybe have children. We come together as complementary opposites to create something, a third thing, a third person, a living being called a child. All of the space, all of the possible interactions that we could have, it's such a marvelous journey to be a part of, and I hope that this video has been a useful stopping point on your journey. I once more recommend that you read these books for yourself, The Ravaged Bridegroom, The Shadow King, To Be a Man Essay Collection, or any book like King Warrior Magician Lover, The Archetypal Realities, and of course my number one suggestion, The Invisible Partners by John Sanford. I will see you over in the next video, and please, if you're going to take just one thing from this video, one closing sentence, the way to heal your balance or your imbalance, the way to heal your imbalance between your masculine and your feminine is to properly educate yourself about what it means to be either and decide for yourself based on the season of your life, based on the week that you're having, what would be the most healthy move and what would be the unhealthy pattern depending on what's appropriate. Certain times it's appropriate, maybe even during ovulation, for example, a cyclical awareness of ovulation and then going into autumnal energy, going into your bleed and then coming back into spring, internal spring, something like a wild power book where you're charting the energies throughout the month, knowing how to use that natural flow, the different forms of expression, it all, it all adds up and it's so worth it. But do take the time to read the books and understand men so that you can ultimately better understand yourself. Hope this video has been useful. Join me over on the next video where we're going to be continuing the topics into more inner work landscape at depth, breadth, and hopefully in a complementary manner, masculine and feminine. I'll see you over there.